math math some people would cringe just at the word math which i totally understand we don't do a lot of math in this course and i think that's a good decision but math is great math is beautiful so perhaps out of intellectual curiosity more than anything else in this video i'd like to invite you to take a second look at something we did in the lectures for this week which is about trigonometry Trigonometry is the study of triangles, or more precisely, it is about the relationship between the angles and the sides of triangles. And in particular, we care a lot about right triangles. Why? Because if you take any polygon, you can cut it up into triangles. And if you have any triangles, you can cut that up into two right triangles. So if you know about right triangles, you know about the world! But is there a relationship between the angles and the sides? Well, after all, this big guy here has pretty much the same angles, but it has much longer sides. So a long, long time ago, someone really, really smart noticed something. Say, if we go from the small triangle to the large triangle, and the bottom side becomes twice as long. But how about this side? This side also becomes twice as large. But what doesn't change is that this is still smaller than that. This is smaller than that. So what if we look at the ratio of two sides rather than just one side? Let's make that a little more precise. Say we have a right triangle here with this side A and that side B. So what if we look at the ratio A over B? If we fix the same angles and make this right triangle larger so that this side becomes 2A, that side becomes 2B then this ratio of this side over that side will be 2a over 2b. Oh, the 2's cancel out, so that is still a over b. So we have found a way to relate the angles of a right triangle to some aspect of the sides, namely the ratio of two sides, that is not affected by making the triangle bigger or smaller. Say we have an angle, which I call a here. Then there is a side that is on the opposite end of my angle, and there is a hypotenuse, and there is a side that is adjacent to my angle. Now, mathematicians ended up using several functions to relate the angle to the side ratios. Sine of an angle is defined to be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, and the cosine of an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. A very important special case is when the hypotenuse is 1. This simplifies a couple things because now sine of a is just the opposite side. The opposite side equals sine of a. For the same reason, the adjacent side equals the cosine of a. So we have the basic definitions down, and the natural next question to ask is, can we do better? Can we do more with this? Like this triangle, for example, you see that this angle is rather small, and the sine of this angle is this side divided by this side. But how small can this angle be? It cannot be less than zero, right? What if you have a negative angle? Can you take a sine of a negative angle? And how about this angle, the big one here? The big one here, the sine of this big angle is this side divided by this side. But this guy cannot be bigger than a certain amount. Strictly speaking, it cannot be bigger than a right angle. Can you take the sine of an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees? We couldn't with just the right triangles, so let's set out to expand the definition. Here's one way to do that, by moving to a plane, an xy plane if you will. There we have a circle with radius 1. Pick a point on the circle and draw our favorite object, a right triangle. And there's a reason we started with a circle of radius 1, because like we said, a right triangle with hypotenuse of length 1 is really nice. The length of this opposite side is just the sine of a, and the adjacent side is the cosine of a. And so the coordinate of this point on the circle would be cosine of a, sine of a. So we added an xy plane, we added a circle, but seriously, nothing's new so far. Except when you realize, do we still need that right triangle there? Sorry my dear, we loved you, but you're not needed anymore. 
What I mean is that we can just define our sine and cosine to be the coordinates of this point on the circle. So if we have an angle B that's larger than 90 degrees, no problem. This point on the circle is to the left of 0, so cosine of B is actually negative, although the sine is still positive. What about a negative angle C? Again, no problem. Just that this time, cosine of C is positive, but sine of C is negative. So our trig function started out as a relationship between angles and sides on the right triangle. And now it powered up with these definitions. You can take an angle, think of it as the direction of a vector on a plane, and get the horizontal and vertical components of this vector using cosine and sine. Enough said. But there is one more thing. Nah, just food for thought. Number one, if you have two angles and they differ by a whole rotation, then their cosine and sine will be all same. Number two, what was I going to say? Oh yes, although we extended the definition of the trig functions, they still adhere pretty well to the intuition we had with using the right triangles. We just have to draw them differently. I realized that there is virtually no Python programming in this video, so I hope I can compensate for that a little by showing you a demo made with this week's project template. I have a spaceship in the middle, and it shoots a laser beam onto a red circle. There's a little white ball on the red circle, and that is an indicator for a, a nice angle. That angle is shown as radian on the top left, and as degree on the top right. And besides using the keyboard, I can also click and drag with the mouse to set the ship's angle. I guess this is a good place for the reminder that the angles we use in our Python programs are all in radians, not degrees. You know those things with pi? Ah, oh, the good old pi is 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, 2, 6, 5, 3, 5. No, seriously, but there is a good reason why we use radians and why there is pi in radians. Suppose this is 1. Again, we have our circle of radius 1. And this is our angle. And here it tells us that the angle is 3rd pi. What that means is that this arc here, from this point to that point, the length of this arc is 1 3rd pi. So, if you go all the way around, that's the angle of 2 pi. And of course, 2 pi is 360 degrees. Oh, and here's another reminder. We're so used to the x going to the right and y going up, and so the positive angle going this way, counterclockwise. But for computer graphics, it goes clockwise down, and that's very simple because the origin 0, 0 is right here. And x goes to the right as usual, but y goes down as positive. I really should end this, but I don't want to go. So here's the last tip for you. So in my demo program, you can use the mouse to set the spaceship's angle. Instead of going from an angle to a vector for which you use trick functions, you go the other way from a vector to an angle. Naturally, what you can use is an inverse trick function. Here's my implementation using the a102 function, inverse tangent function, you found in the documentation. Your homework is to figure out how it works. Just kidding. Happy coding, everyone.